Hello, in this video we're continuing with evaluating limits. We're going to focus on method four, which is to do limits by using the conjugate. So in these examples, we're going to have radical functions show up quite a bit. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. We have the limit as x approaches zero. And then on the top, we have the square root of four plus x minus two over x. So direct substitution, because that's method one, just to see what happens. If we plug in zero, we're going to get the square root of four minus two over zero, and that's zero over zero. So again, that's bad. That means we have to use one of our methods. Um, so we need to get rid of this radical. And then back from algebra, we know that if we wanted to get rid of a radical, we can multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by now the conjugate of what? And it's going to be the conjugate of the top, basically the thing you're trying to get rid of. Uh, I want to get rid of this square root. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the, the conjugate of that. So the square root of 4 plus x plus 2. And you can do that on the top and bottom, because that's, again, the conjugate. After you do that, you would then FOIL, so multiply these two together. So this times this is just going to be 4 plus x. Notice that I don't actually just get rid of the square roots. I do put it in parentheses. Then you're going to multiply these two together. You can get 2 times the square root of 4 plus x minus when you multiply these two together. Now the reason, and if you remember this from algebra, we multiply by the conjugate because the middle two will cancel. And that's good for us because now I got rid of the radicals. And finally, two times negative two, and that gives me negative four, all over the bottom. Now, you do not, or, uh, you do not distribute this x in here. All right, you just leave it alone. Why? Because this is the x I'm trying to get rid of, because that makes the denominator zero. So don't, don't distribute it in, because you'll have to factor it back out later. That's just more work for you. OK. So let's clean up the top. So we get 4 plus x. These things canceled, and we get minus 4. On the bottom, we have x with the square root. All right, now why, why is this good? Well, the, form, the fours cancel, so that's gonna leave me with just x on top, and that's great for us because my whole goal was to get rid of the x from the bottom, which is that x. Now, divides out. So after I cancel those, I have just one left on top and the conjugate piece from earlier on the bottom. Now, can I plug in zero now? Let's go ahead and find out. We're going to get one on top, the square root of 4 plus 0 plus 2. Well, the square root of 4 plus 0, that's the square root of 4 which is 2 plus 2 is 4. So we do have an answer. The limit is 1 fourth. Now, in this example, we have the limit as x approaches 0. So let's go ahead and just see what happens when we plug in 0. We're going to get 0 on the top. And we're going to get the square root of 2. Then when we plug in 0 here, we're going to get minus the square root of 2. And that's 0 over 0. So again, we need to do something. Uh, now, because we have radical signs, I'm going to try multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. Now, I'm trying to get rid of these radical signs here. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the, rat, or the conjugate of that. So that would be, on the bottom, it would be the square root of 2 plus x plus the square root of 2 minus x. I'm just going to multiply that on the top. Now, remember that you... Don't distribute this x. All right, you just kind of leave that alone, and you leave the radical. I'm sorry, uh, the conjugate alone. All right, because again, our goal right now is to deal with the bottom. 
Now, when you multiply out the bottom, what you're going to get is 2 plus x plus, sorry, minus 2 minus x. Because what happens is when you multiply these two together, you're going to get the 2 plus x. You multiply those two, and then immediately multiplying these two, they're going to cancel. Okay, again, that was the whole point of the conjugate. And then you're going to multiply the last two. Now, when you multiply the last two, remember that when the square roots cancel, you should still put it in parentheses. Okay, that's important. All right, moving on. On the top, we still have all that junk, so we're going to leave that alone for now. And on the bottom, you can see what happens. We're going to get a 2 plus x minus 2. And then this was important because if you didn't put this in parentheses, you would miss this. You do have a double negative. So you're going to get another plus x. OK, so on the top, you still have all that stuff again. And on the bottom, these twos cancel, and you're left with just 2x. Now you can actually see that the x is going to cancel here, which is good. I'm going to write what's left over, which is still that conjugate piece from the top. And then we're just going to get 2 on the bottom. All right, now 0 I can plug in because I'm not going to get 0 on the bottom anymore. We're going to get the square root of 2 plus another square root of 2 over 2. What's well, 2 square root of 2 over 2? The 2's cancel, and you're just left with the square root of 2. And there's our answer. All right, I have two examples for you to try, which are right here. So give them a shot. And to find the solutions to these problems and more information about NIU, please visit the link down below. Good luck.